You're watching WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a weekly video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm Corey Nockreiner, CISSP, Director of Security Strategy for WatchGuard, and your host. Let's jump in for the week starting March 5th. As has been the case lately, this was a very busy week for security. Let's start with some anonymous news. The big news that was released this Monday was the FBI, in co cooperation with a bunch of other uh, law enforcement agencies, were able to uh, arrest five to six anonymous and LOLSEC related suspects. It turned out the leader of LOLSEC, who goes by the handle Sabu, was actually uh, arrested as a suspect back in August. The FBI turned him, and he's been working for the FBI since to help track down other members. Uh, it turns out this guy is a Puerto Rican gentleman that lives in uh, New York. He was 28 years old. I believe his name was Hector Monsegur or something like that. Anyways, again, he turned on some of his little second anonymous team, helped the FBI track down these other members. Now, these are mostly LOLSEC members, members that were doing the hack mid to late last year. Uh, they were famous for doing some of the PlayStation Network breaches, doing the PBS breach, and doing the HB Gary related one, I believe, as well. In response to this news, a day after this news became public, Anonymous, uh, as an ad hoc group, actually ended up taking down or more specifically defacing a number of Panda Securities web properties. And they basically said that Anonymous is still alive and uh, they weren't really happy with Sabu. Another interesting tidbit of information that came out with all this, these anonymous and LOLSEC related uh, arrests was a number of these anonymous and LOLSEC related hackers tend to use a free and paid for VPN services you can subscribe to on the internet. These services, you make an encrypted connection to them and they promise to help anonymize you on the internet. Well, as it turns out, the FBI was able to contact one of these services. I won't share their particular name since it's kind of a, a rude name name, but they were able to contact these services and they got that service provider to actually sh share the real IP details of one of the anonymous hackers. Now whether you think this is a good thing or not, it's good to know that these VPN services you can subscribe to may not be as anonymous as you think they are. It might be better to use your own VPN, uh, like the ones we provide at WatchGuard, to secure your company data at least. Next, let's move on to software update related news from this week. Various vendors released some security updates this week. Uh, it seems like they've been doing it every week, but Google Chrome has released another Chrome update. I believe it's attached to the Flash update that came a week earlier. Again, if you use Chrome, Flash is actually built in. It's one of the few th browsers that has Flash with it rather than forcing you to download it yourself. So whenever there's Flash updates, Chrome has to quickly release another version. So of course, if you use Chrome, be sure to have it set to automatically update. Also, tied to Apple news, you might have heard that Apple announced the new iPad this year, and I think they're calling it the new iPad. It has a better display. But attached to that release and announcement was also iOS 5.1. So if you're an iOS user, if you have an iPad, an iPhone, or an iPod, you might want to get the iOS 5.1 update since it does also include some security updates. When they released this, they also released a new version of iTunes and I believe also a new version of Apple TV, all of which have security related updates. You might want to patch those as well. Finally, this hasn't come out yet, but Thursday Microsoft announced upcoming patch days. So next Tuesday will be patch day for all Microsoft products. Their pre-announcement warned that they plan on releasing six different bulletins. Most of the bulletins fix flaws in Windows. I believe there's also some fixes for developers who use Visual Studio. And finally, a product called, uh, I believe it's Microsoft Expression Studio. I think it's similar to Adobe's Illustrator, probably not one of their most popular products. But if you use Windows and of course Visual Studio or that uh, vector drawing program, you definitely want to check out Microsoft's site on Tuesday and download those security updates.
The final piece of news I'll share with you this week is a bunch of new zero-day web browser vulnerabilities. This week up in Canada is a security conference called CanSec West. And at that conference is a very popular hacking contest called Pwn to Own, uh, where I believe Tipping Point and their zero-day initiative uh, they sponsor a hacking contest where they set up various web browsers and they pay uh, attackers who can find new vulnerabilities to take control of those web browsers, typically drive-by download type attacks. Well, this year there's a little drama around the Pwn to Own contest. Google, who of course makes Chrome, doesn't really like the fact that uh, ZDI or the Zero Day Initiative people don't require these hackers to actually disclose vulnerability information. They just uh, have them show how the attack works so they can make a signature for that attack, but they don't necessarily require you disclose the information to the vendor. So Google created their own contest in sync with it called, I believe they called it Ponium to go with their Chromium name. And in their contest, they put up to up to $1 million worth of prizes. So basically for a full uh, user access level attack against Chrome, they would give you $60,000. So, you know, between uh, Google's doing their Ponium and ZDI doing their, their Pwn to Own, these guys really don't like each other's disclosure practices. So despite this drama and whether you think that Google's right in their disclosure practices or ZDI is right in how they handle these type of exploits for pay, uh, the contests did go on and a number of vulnerabilities were found. Well, right away, Google was able to find a Chrome flaw. A particular Russian researcher uh, did a two-part Chrome flaw, where first, of course, he found a flaw that allowed him to execute code in Chrome. But one of the key things about Chrome is it does sandbox its browser, making it hard for an attacker to gain control of the underlying computer. So he also performed a second part of, of his attack, which was a sandbox bypass. So between these two vulnerabilities, Abilities, he's able to get full user privilege on the on the Chrome, the computer running Chrome, simply by a, a drive-by download style attack, meaning a user visiting a website. So that was a big deal, and, and Google's going to be paying him sixty thousand dollars for that attack. Uh, shortly after, there was also two IE9 zero-day vulnerabilities. I believe these IE9 flies even affect IE10, which I believe is still in beta. These two flaws were very similar. Uh, the, the Russian researchers who found them said they were quite difficult to exploit because again, IE is also using some sandboxing technologies. So not only do you have to find a flaw in the browser to be able to, to execute your code, but you need to be able to bypass the sandbox. So it seems like the Pwn to Own contest was you know, very profitable for attackers and very good for vendors who can now fix these zero-day vulnerabilities. I wouldn't expect patches to these immediately, uh, but it's good to know that the good guys know about them, and in the months to come, we'll see an update for sure. So that's it for this week's Security Week in Review. There were a bunch of other security stories. I might put some of them in the URLs, which I share at the bottom of the post. So if you'd like to see those, be sure to visit the WatchGuard Security Center and check out all our posts. On top of that, if you'd like to contact me and tell me what you think of the show or share some stories you've seen, be sure to, to contact me on Twitter. I go by at SecAdept. As usual, thanks for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.